So my sister has a window well that uh, she moved into this house and it was this way. Whoever had done it previously had cemented up against the window well and had not properly trimmed it when she got there. She actually ended up hammering down the edges here. Um, but the problem is, is the kids like to ride their bikes around this area and they have backed up into this window well and fell into it and cut their arms on it and stuff like that. So um, I said that I'd go ahead and make her a, a window well cover. However, the person that lived here previously, um, I think it was a short sale, so they ended up getting kicked out. and uh, Or it was a foreclosure, I'm not sure. They took all the window well covers with them and as soon as she moved in they tried to sell them back. Uh, which I kind of think is low, but this window is kind of crooked as far as I can tell. So what I'm going to do is create a template for her um, to test out before I uh, actually go and weld anything up. Now, the type of window well cover that I want to make is like this one here. Here are my window well covers. Um, right out here is about four inches. Eh could be three inches, I haven't measured it, but it's maybe three and a half, four inch wide flat bar. On the very back, right back here, there's a piece of angle iron that goes all the way across. And then there's a couple of supports that run this way. Expanded metal sandwiched in between. Um, the angle iron and the flat bar are welded together right over here. And then, let me get a close up. Right at the end, there's a few holes, just like that, and you can drop a screw down that to keep the... Uh, great from shifting left and right and it's heavy enough it's not going to move out anyway this flat bar allows for a lot of slop um, you can build these window well covers like this for a standard format and and if they're a little bit bent and things it it allows for that I have a sister who has a much older home and she has window wells that are probably only about half this deep and a little bit crooked and what I'm going to do is design a window well cover based on a picture for her based off of this design, um, but I'm going to use the torch mate to cut these corners because if you were to try to bend that in three or four inches you'd have to have hydraulics um, and things that I don't have. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, cut it the way I would cut it. Um, and that's the way these were cut. If you actually look right here, there's that's a weld seam and there's another one there. So they had to cut these out based on what I've seen. And we're just going to go ahead and duplicate that. Alright, in order to make this type of window well cover, what I'm going to do is import my picture into the CAD software. And I have the measurement from my sister on the outside of that window well. And it is 54 and a half inches. So I'm going to select point A and point B. She measured the outside edge. We're going to call that 54 and a half, 54.5. Apply that and that will resize the picture to actual size. Now in order to, I have some three inch bar out in my garage. I believe it's three inch. I'll have to double check that. But I want to cut the radius here um, on the table. So what we're going to do is try to find out what radius that is. Um, I'll change to fill alt s so you can see this easier. And let's change to a different color. I did that by right and left clicking on a color down below. So now you can see that this does not match the radius uh, quite right. So we're just going to resize it and bring it up. And it's getting closer. I think we're really close. Um, they probably used a standard size right now or 31 inches, so let's just make it 36 and see what that looks like. I actually think that's really close. Let me just use my arrow keys. I think that is a 36 inch radius. Um, some of the unevenness there is just because they had to hammer down the edges, the sharp edges. So we're going to call it a 36 inch uh, diameter there. So what I need to do now is I need to adjust this for three inch bar. Actually I'm going to go out in the garage and measure that metal real quick make sure it is three inches. Well good thing I went out and measured it. It is only two inch bar so we're going to have to make our tolerances just a little bit tighter. So I need to make 
this a two inch bar here two inch uh, wide curve so alt s to toggle my show fill I'm going to take my current circle and control D to duplicate and I'm going to have to shrink this down by four inches so we're gonna make it a 32 inches and when I center this highlight them both alt K with last object selected uh, align to last object selected on the left I'll center that and do an XOR weld so let's highlight highlight both of these come over here and do an XOR weld and apparently I had the outside pictures I, I, I don't know what happened there just let's start over again control Z to undo that I used my hotkey control 1 for my XOR weld if I do an alt S now and show my fill this is my radius now I want this to overlap halfway each direction so I'm going to move this minus one inch in each direction and so that gives us a little bit of room for slop in there um, on that curve and we're going to have to duplicate this now now I, I asked my sister I said is it deeper here than it is here because it, it looks shallower here she didn't have a way to measure it really well she didn't put a cross beam across here and measure against it she was trying to do it against the window so she wasn't sure but she thought it was so hence another reason to make this template um, but let's go ahead and duplicate this control D for duplicate and I'm just going to eyeball it until we think we've got it lined up and actually I think that's really close so now what we're going to do is just move it one inch in each direction plus one in the X minus one in the Y and that's got us pretty close to being lined up now the next thing I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and create our arches um, the point of inflection where we're changing uh, our radius from this curve to this curve is the point that I want to cut these off at so I'm going to go ahead and just create a little box left hand side being the point of inflection and I will highlight the circle and do an XOR weld control one in my case again again that's a hotkey that I set up and then I'm going to do the point of inflection on this other part of the circle or radius whatever you want to call it same thing XOR weld delete these pieces and now let's go ahead and um, I think I'm going to just leave this one right here as it is I'm going to duplicate this side control D I'm going to use my mirror horizontal mirror and that should be what I need actually I'm going to delete that I'm going to base it on the picture and I'm going to come find the point of inflection here oops and I moved the picture so let's do this again control Z again to undo that let's actually come up to this one I'm not going to worry about the point of inflection it's going to be covered with a piece of um, angle iron so we'll go just a hair beyond the point of inflection just so that we don't have to go and try to insert a little piece there and weld it we're just cover it up with that angle iron and then we're going to come down here and try to find what would be a straight line and I think we're going to be a little bit beyond on the right side of this point of inflection here so we'll take these X or weld them if I can select the right objects and undo again because I dragged that now if I do an alt test you can see this is what I have now I'm going to leave these curves as they are but I'm going to also simulate the angle iron which would be right here and we'll make it uh, 
one and a half inches deep. And I'm just going to freehand rotate this to match because again the window's crooked. Or at least the um, window well is crooked. So that's pretty close there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this. Let my hard drive warm up, spin up, I should say. Okay, and we'll call it window well. And the reason why I'm saving it at this point is I'm going to actually, com for, for the purposes of a template, I'm going to combine these two uh, arches here. So I'm going to combine them with a piece. I did a regular weld on them and now what I'm going to do is come in and delete these internal points and that lines up perfectly so if I do an alt s this is what I'm expecting the window well cover to look like um, I can come back to the save file so I can cut out these arches now um, despite what I just uh, did with the weld I like that template um, I could print this out through Torchmate's software. Problem is, is I don't want to go and build a grid system manually. When you print out you have margins and everything doesn't line up necessarily the way you want it to. You could try to export this in like Adobe Illustrator for instance and then in Adobe Illustrator I can export that into a picture but for my purposes of my template I'm going to go ahead and just hit print screen I'm going to go ahead and open up one of my software editing, um, uh, image editing softwares, and I will paste that. And let me just shrink the screen down just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just crop this image a little bit. I'm going to save this. And choose a format. Now the reason why I'm doing it this way is I have a program. It's by Matthias uh, Matthias Wandel, Wandel, I believe. Anyway, if you go to wood, let's do this. Type big print in Google. Print and wood gears. And this is a useful program. Um, but anyway, this is a program he created. He sells it for $22. And you can import an image and basically do the measurement tool like I did in the beginning in TorchMate CAD. And it will resize it for your printer. And then when you go ahead and print it out, there are there's a grid system on it that helps you line up things a little easier. And I, I think that's a little easier than... Uh, doing it through the TorchMate software because I have to manu manually go and create the grid. So we'll go ahead and launch the big print. Let's go ahead and open the window well. Now, if I remember correctly, it was 54 and a half inches. Let me just go double check that. 54 and a half inches on the outside edge. Um, 56 and a half is going to be what mine is based on the measurements I made because I 54 and a half is the center of this so you add an inch on each side it's going to be 56 and a half so we'll go to calibrate scale by distance and I'm going to zoom in and click on point A come over here zoom in on the other corner yeah I'm still getting used to this I was trying to uh, manually scroll it, but we'll just move this point over there manually. All right. We're going to do this one more time. point A and I really don't need to be that picky about how close I am um, to a degree I do of course but my my recording software is getting in the way so I'm having a hard time scaling 
and seeing what I want to see. And we'll click on point B. And inches, it's 56 and a half. So when I say OK, it goes ahead and it go ahead, it, it goes ahead and rescales it. And I have my sh printing set on landscape. So what this is going to do is print out all of these pages. And this grid system will allow me to line up each page, tape them together, um, and then put this template. I'm going to put this template on a piece of uh, kind of a cardboard paper. I'm going to lay this out on that, um, cut it up, and then have her take it home and actually try it out. If this fits the way I expect it to fit, then I can go ahead and cut out these arches um, and this square bar and my angle iron, and um, I'll have to pick up some expanded metal, and then I can go ahead and cut out this window wall cover.